Hello learners and welcome to your natural sciences lesson. So today we're going to be doing practice questions and application questions that are based on the reaction between acid and metal oxide. Right, so the first question that we have, it says that we need to match the names of the substances in column A with the chemical formula from column B. So we have number one all the way to number six and we have sodium chloride. We have magnesium oxide, we have sodium oxide, calcium oxide, ammonium sulfate, and lithium oxide. So we need to know which of these names are matching with which chemical formula for the particular name. So we just, for us to be able to answer this question nicely, we're just going to number on the side, one, two, three, four, five, six, so that we know. So these numbers are according to the names. We know that when you're referring to number one, we're talking about our sodium chloride. So looking at column B, we're just going to quickly start with the, with the obvious ones that we know. Then we can, take, we can take it from there. We do know that this is a salt that, is, that, that we get whenever we're mixing or whenever we are reacting hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So sodium, we know that sodium has a chemical formula of Na and then chlorine will have a chemical formula of Cl, capital letter C and small letter L. So our sodium chloride is going to be NaCl. So the first one, NaCl. And then, so this is accounted for. Now we do know that Ca is calcium. So do we have anything that talks about calcium on the names that we have here? So we have calcium, oxide is number four. So number four is going to be our CaO. We do know that we find calcium in our body. It makes our, our bones to be, in our teeth to be very strong. And then, so that is dealt with. We also know that Na again is sodium. So we have a sodium, but then it goes with the O, and O is oxygen. So something that has a sodium and an oxygen, so sodium oxide, because we have a metal, Na, and with an oxide, or a metal reacting with oxygen, we get a metal oxide. So this is our sodium oxide. On this table that we have, it is number three. So number three, it is going to be Na2O. Remember that the two tells us that in this particular compound of sodium oxide, we have two atoms of sodium and one atom of oxygen. However, if the two was in front of the entire chemical formula, if the two was written like this, two NaO, we would know that this particular compound, this, this two means that we have two molecules of this compound. So it goes for everything, the sodium and also including the oxygen. So you have two atoms of sodium and two atoms of oxygen combined together to form one molecule of sodium oxide. So it would be sodium oxide. So now, but then the two would say we have two molecules of that particular compound. But if the two is a subscript like it's, like it's written there, it just tells you that you only have two atoms of this particular compound being sodium. Now, moving on the, to our next one. So this is dealt with our next one, MgO. We know that Mg is magnesium, which is a metal, and then O is oxygen. So again, a metal plus an oxygen reacting to form a metal oxide. And that is going to be our magnesium oxide. So that is number two. Capital letter M, small letter G, capital letter O. So that is dealt with. And then from the periodic table again, we know that lithium, lithium it is a metal and it has a chemical symbol of Li, capital letter L and small letter I. And obviously the O, that's our oxygen. So therefore, if we have a look at the names given on column A, we see that lithium oxide is number six. So therefore, that is going to be L, I, A2, oxygen. Remember, the two tells you that we have two uh, atoms of lithium for every one atom of oxygen. So the ratio is fixed for, the, for this particular compound. So all these compounds that you're talking about here, they have a fixed ratio. So for you to get calcium oxide, number four, you must have one, one atom of calcium and one atom of oxygen. Should we have three atoms of calcium and one atom of oxygen, then that's not the, 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 the number of, of, of the electrons or the number of that particular compound here will not be balanced. So you need to make sure that the ratio of each of these compounds here, it is fixed. They have a specific ratio. Then, which then leaves us, so this is dealt with, 
it leaves us with the, with the, with the odd one out, the, the, the ammonium sulfate. We know that this is a chemical formula for ammonium. And this is our sulfate. Our SO4 is sulfate. So then that tells us that number five, ammonium sulfate, is this. So the two outside the bracket, it's NH4, with the two and then SO4. The subscript two outside the bracket, it tells you how many, how many uh, molecules in this case of ammonium do you have. So basically, how many atoms you have of nitrogen. So the two is going to be going for the N and also going for the hydrogen. So it's going to be two multiplied by the one for nitrogen and two multiplied by the four for hydrogen. So in this compound, we have two atoms of nitrogen. Then you have eight atoms of hydrogen because two times four is eight. So our next question wants us to write down a balanced equation, a balanced chemical equation. So we need to write down a word equation and a balanced equation for each of the following reactions. So we are told that our first reaction is our hydrochloric acid. and it, it is reacting with our calcium oxide. So we need to know what is going to be the product of these two substances when they are reacting. So starting with the word equation, we know this is our hydrochloric acid as given hydro. Chloric acid plus calcium oxide. What is going to be the, pro the, the, the product? So hydrochloric acid is as an acid is it will, it will contribute to the hydrogen, and then the calcium oxide it will contribute to the, the, the oxygen. So what are we going to have? Obviously, we're going to have salt and water. So the salt that you're going to be getting, that you're going to be receiving at the end of this, product, of this reaction is going to be our calcium chloride plus, because for the lack of, of space, we're just going to write our H2O down here, oh, water. Because we're writing a weight equation, so this is going to be water as one of the products. Now, in terms of a chemical equation, we know that hydrochloric acid has a chemical formula of HCl plus calcium oxide, it is CaO. This is going to react to form CaCl2 plus H2O. Then we need to check if whether the equation is balanced. So how do we then check? We need to count the number of atoms on the left-hand side. They must be equal to the number of atoms on the right-hand side for each of the elements given, for each of the atoms given here. So we have one hydrogen on the left, but then two hydrogens on the right. Calcium, um, chlorine, we have one, we have two there. Calcium, we have one, we have one, it's balanced. Oxygen, we have one, we have one, so oxygen and calcium are balanced. The problem is with the, uh, with the hydrogen and the chlorine. And remember, Lenas, that when we are, whenever we're balancing equations, we are using uh, the, the coefficients, not the subscripts. So we never change the subscripts, but we can change the coefficients in order to balance the chemical equation. So if we write a 2 there, starting with the 2, so that we can be able to balance that hydrogen there, we're seeing that this 2 tells us that we have two molecules of, hydro, of hydrochloric acid. So if we have two molecules of hydrochloric acid, that means you're going to have two, two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of chlorine. So two hydrogen, two hydrogen. Two chlorine and the two chlorine. So remember that these two only goes for the chlorine, that we have two atoms of chlorine in this particular compound. So we did say that the calcium and the oxygen are balanced. We didn't, we didn't tamper with those. We only changed the, the coefficient of the HCl, which now made us to be able to balance with the right-hand side. So now this equation is balanced. Now, moving on to our next one. We have again hydrochloric acid that is going to be reacting with sodium oxide. So, word equation first, hydrochloric acid plus sodium oxide. What are you going to get? You're going to get uh, the sodium and the chlorine, they're going, to, they're going to react together to form the salt because the hydrogen is going to be contributed by the acid and the oxygen by the, by the, by the, by the base or the, 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 the metal oxide in this case to produce the water. 
So our product is going to be sodium chloride and water. So in words, we have sodium chloride plus, plus water. So because we have the soil, it's going to be the sodium chloride will be the remainder when the oxygen is contributed by the base and the hydrogen being uh, contributed by the acid. So the remainder is going to be the two substances there to form our sodium chloride. Now in terms of now a, a, an equation, a chemical equation, hydrochloric acid has a chemical formula which is HCl plus sodium oxide chemical formula, it's Na2. O, and then this is going to react to form sodium chloride. We do know sodium chloride has a chemical equation NaCl, NaCl plus H2O. Now, the last thing to check is if whether the equation does balance or if the equation is balanced. Now, from, from the get-go, we can see that on the left-hand side, we have two sodium. However, on the right-hand side, we only have one of them. So how do we then check and balance that? And also, uh, the hydrogen, we have one on the left-hand side and then two on the right-hand side because of that two there. But then when looking at the oxygen, there's one oxygen and one oxygen. So the oxygen is balanced. So now, what happens if, remember, when we are balancing, we are using the coefficients. So if you start with the 2, so that you can balance out that, that, that 2 there. So we're now going to have two molecules of HCl, which means two atoms of, of, of hydrogen, two atoms of hydrogen. And then the two atoms of chlorine, but one atom of chlorine there. So now... If I then insert another 2 on the right-hand side in front of the NaCl, so which then now goes back to say, we're now going to have two sodium atoms. So the, the hydrogen was balanced. It's two hydrogen on the left-hand side. And then we also have two chlorine on the, on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, after putting that 2, we now have two sodium and two chlorine atoms that we have on the right-hand side. So the, the chlorine balances out with that chlorine and the, uh, the sodium atom balances out with that one. So now our sodium, chlorine and hydrogen are now balanced. So the oxygen still remains un untempered with, it's still one on either side. So now with this, we can then safely say that our equation is balanced. So to move on to our last question now. It says that for solutions of the following substances, we need to give the name of one example say if whether this, the, the solution will be acidic or basic, and then lastly, say if it has a low pH or a high pH. We are given metal oxide. So the solution of a metal oxide, will, we need to give the, 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 the name of one example of, the, of our metal oxide. So Roman figure one, answering that, metal oxide, we can use magnesium oxide because we know that magnesium is a metal reacting with oxygen. It gives us magnesium oxide. Now, a metal oxide, if it's dissolved in water, will the solution be acidic or basic? We know that metal oxides, they are basic because when dissolved in water, they are going to be basic. However, the non-metal oxide are going to be acidic because the non-metal oxide dissolved in water will have a pH that is less than 7. So this is going to be basic. And then number three, say if it is a low or high pH. Obviously, we do know once the, the pH is greater than 7, or rather, once the substance is basic, it has a high pH that is greater than 7. So we can say pH, small letter P, capital letter H, pH greater than 7, which means high pH. And then now, our last one says, a non-metal oxide. So the very same questions, but they're now based on a non-metal oxide. So I give one example of one non-metal oxide. We can think of carbon, we can think of oxygen combined together, chemically bonded together to form carbon dioxide. So number one, again, CO2. Number two, Say if the solution will be acidic or basic. Now, if metal oxide are basic when dissolved in water, then the non-metal oxides, when dissolved in water, they're going to be acidic because that's how we get the acid rain. And we know that the name even tells itself, it says itself, acid rain. So therefore, this is going to be 
acidic. And then number three, say if it is a low or a high pH. Obviously, all the acids have a pH that is less than seven. So we can start by saying pH is less than seven, which means it is a low pH. It has a low pH. So now, before moving on to the next part of questions, which are the application questions, and they are still based on the reaction between acid and metal oxide, we're just going to go a quick short break, and I will see you just after this.